So hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to yet another video and today we're taking a look at yet another new thing that I haven't previously covered on the channel and that is a gaming monitor. Behind me I have the Aorus KD25F 240Hz 1080p monitor and today we're going to be talking all about it. So without any further ado, let's get into it. So special thanks to Aorus Bangladesh for sponsoring this video and the entire channel actually. Thank you guys so much for sending the monitor my way. So, with that being said, let's get into the review. So, let's just start off with the unboxing. It's really simple, and the box is actually really nice. It's a understated black box. Open the box up, there's two tabs that you open, and once you have access inside, you pretty much just pull out the foam, and on top you'll find a quick start guide, an HDMI cable, a DisplayPort cable, two different uh, power cables depending on which region you're from, that's pretty much it for the accessories and related to the monitor itself you get the base of the stand which is completely metal but more on that later after that you can take off the top part of the foam and then you'll see the monitor itself and the remaining part of the stand at this point you can connect the base of the stand to the main part of the stand by a screw which is already pre-installed into the base and once you've done that set it aside get the monitor out of its foam and then you can put the monitor on once you've done that, your monitor is pretty much set up and ready to go, and you can put it on your desk. And yeah, that's the unboxing. Now on to the actual interesting stuff. So let's start with the specifications. So this is a 24.5 inch monitor, so your standard size for those of you that are into competitive gaming and uh, fast-paced FPS shooters, uh, this is pretty much the standard size that you'll see with most monitors. It is a super fast 240Hz TN panel with its with an advertised 0.5 millisecond response time, which is super super fast. And if it is actually that fast, it's something we'll go into later, but that is what it says on the spec sheet, and it is actually super responsive from my testing, and it's super smooth as well. Now, when it comes to the resolution, it is 1080p, which is your standard um, resolution for most gaming monitors nowadays. Um, that is to say anything esports related. If you guys are more focused on playing story-driven games, like RDR2 or The Witcher, then I would definitely recommend a lower refresh rate and a higher resolution monitor like a 1440p 145 or 1440p 165Hz monitor. But if you're looking for an esports driven monitor, this is definitely a great pickup. Now moving on from there, the monitor has an advertised 400 nits of brightness. This is an 8-bit panel with pretty good color rendition. It's a little bit nicer to look at than the BenQ XL 2546 which in my opinion has worse off colors, even though it is a better esports monitor. And of course, I do watch my own videos back on my monitor as I'm editing. So, you know, having a little bit better color rendition doesn't hurt. So that's the basic specifications for your panel. Now let's move on to the design of the monitor. The design of the Aorus KD25F isn't as understated as other monitors that you've probably seen before. It's a gamer design and it's actually done really well in this context. There's a lot of nice RGB backlighting uh, behind the monitor, but that's not exactly why I like the design of the monitor, even though it does do a lot for the aesthetics. The main reason that I like the design of this monitor is because of the stand itself. The stand is actually designed in a V-shape so that you can tilt it away from you towards the right and swivel the monitor towards you. This is actually a super ideal way for me to play because I like having my elbow on the desk when I'm aiming as I am an arm aimer. Uh, with a really low sense so you know it pretty much helps me comfortably aim and push my mouse pad and my mouse as far as it needs to go so yeah that's my preferred way of playing and like i said about the stand it has a 130 millimeters of height adjust it has five degrees degrees down and 21 degrees up it swivels 20 degrees in either direction and has 90 degrees uh, of pivot towards the right so yeah it would have been nice to see 90 degree pivot towards the left as well but hey it's not something I'm going to hold against it because it is a gaming monitor and I see most of you using it as a primary display anyway. So yeah. Going on from there, build quality is really good. Looking at pictures of this online, I didn't really expect it to be as robust as it is. They, they make some products that have super great build quality and this is definitely one of them. This is after all one of their premium monitors. So the base of the stand is completely metal and it's super sturdy, it's super super robust and it just feels premium and the entire body is actually made up of plastic and so is a main part of the stand where the rgb and everything is housed it's still super high quality because the plastics that are used are premium um, not your typical kind of cheap plastic that you see in a lot of products so yeah i definitely appreciate gigabytes 
um, attention to detail here when it comes to caring about the quality of the product itself. So yeah, definitely kudos to them for that. And now talking about the rear I.O., it's actually pretty interesting. You have two HDMI 2.0 ports, DisplayPort 1.2, and other than that, you also have two additional USB ports to connect your peripherals if you want to. And there's also an interesting inclusion of a 3.5mm headphone and microphone jack. And this is actually bound with another feature built into the software of the monitor that is active noise cancellation. It can customize the level of active noise cancellation that you use from low to high in the software itself but it's actually a pretty neat feature to include and the way it does that is there's actually a tiny microphone right over here under the Aorus logo and it actually can uh, listens to the environmental audio and pretty much helps your microphone filter out any excess noise that you don't want your teammates or your friends to hear while you're playing with them. Well, going on from there, let's talk about the software features of this monitor. Now, first of all, there's a few things that I always expect from gaming monitors. The number one among them is some kind of motion blur reduction system. So basically your usual backlight strobing technique of getting rid of all of that blurriness to give you a clear crisp image. And that is something that this monitor has. And I would go as far as saying that it actually directly competes with BenQ's tried and true DIAC. So yeah, super crisp image formed by the aim stabilizer on this monitor. Weird name, but excellent execution. So yeah, good job on that Aorus. Now one place where they kind of lacked for me was Black Equalizer. Now the good thing is I'm not a huge fan of Black Equalizer in the first place. I don't use it a lot, I don't find the need to use it because I don't play games like R6 or Escape from Tarkov. But if you do like to play those graphically darker titles, then being able to see your enemy in the dark would definitely be an advantage and mo given that most gaming monitors have a decent black equalizer standing, I would have expected this one from Aorus to be pretty good. Now I know that the newer monitors but from Aorus actually have a decent um, black equalizer setting, but at the same time I don't see any reason why they can't give a firmware update for this monitor and incorporate a much better version of black equalizer. Anyways, going on from there, there's also the overdrive settings, which are pretty decent. I use mine on balanced. The monitor on balanced is already fast enough to give you the 240Hz experience, so I don't see any reason in using the speed um, setting in the first place. It's pretty much just an overdrive setting to max the 05 millisecond response time advertised on the box. The panel is actually that fast, but I don't see any reason to use it given that the balance setting is already good enough for anything that you might want to do with the monitor. Going on from there, there's actually a bonus feature that I didn't expect um, to see in this monitor and it's called Picture in Picture. And for those of you who don't exactly have the budget to get two monitors, but you also want to try streaming just for the sake of trying it and seeing if you like it, this, fe this feature is actually perfect for you. Um, you can use the extra cable that's uh, given to you in the box of the KD25F, connect it to your graphics card and then connect it to your monitor and use it as a secondary display because the picture-in-picture -picture, uh, feature actually allows you to simulate a second monitor on your first one and displays a tiny little screen on your first monitor. So yeah, you can have your Twitch chat be in a tiny little screen at the top right and you know, just see how you like streaming, interact with your chat, and eventually, if you are into it, get a second monitor. Not a super expensive one, because, you know, you only need your first monitor to be expensive. Just get a cheap second monitor and become a streamer all the time. I don't know. It's up to you. But yeah, it's a pretty cool feature. To have. Going on from there, there's the staple feature that everyone needs to have. That's at least FreeSync and G-Sync. So these two features are really important for me because Every now and then I do like to hop into RDR2 and experience the wilderness and pretty much sink into the story and when I'm doing that obviously my PC is not going to be giving me 240 frames so yeah uh, when you're doing these kinds of things obviously your monitor is going to tear a lot you know your image is going to tear a lot because there's not a lot of frames and what you can basically do to remove all of this is use FreeSync or G-Sync depending on which brand of graphics card you use whether that's AMD or Nvidia now this monitor has actually been approved as G-Sync compatible and I have used G-Sync with this on my computer. It is pretty nice and pretty smooth. Now that we address those features, how do you exactly get to them? Well, at the bottom of the monitor, you have this tiny joystick that allows you to navigate the OSD. And I know that a lot of you guys don't like fiddling with buttons at the bottom or the back of the monitor. It is a hassle and I agree, I hate doing it. 
and that's exactly where the OSD Sidekick software kicks in. It pretty much hooks up to the monitor thanks to the USB cable that you're provided in the box itself. It's better than it's better to navigate with my mouse than to be hunched over over my desk uncomfortably trying to change the setting of a brightness and getting mad when I take it too high. So yeah, it's pretty useful and I appreciate it. Now moving on from there, now that we've covered all of the aspects of the monitor, let's talk about my opinion after using it for almost two weeks. Now this monitor is actually really really solid, in my opinion it's one of the best gaming monitors out there and it's super fluid, the 240Hz is absolutely amazing coming from 60Hz. So in conclusion, what do I think? Should you get the KD25F or should you get another monitor that's also on the market. Speed IPS panels have come far enough to the point where I would say they actually rival TN panels, especially in another monitor made by Oris, that's the FI25F, which is something I'm going to mention in a few seconds actually. So yeah, the difference between the TN panel and Super Speed IPS panel between those monitors was actually so minuscule that I would definitely say that getting the FI25F would be much more worth it, given the fact that you still get the better stand, better color rendition, and of course you do have the IPS panel, so yeah. And in Bangladesh, this monitor is around 43 to 45,000 taka, and in the US it's around 400 bucks. So my opinion is that if you're paying 400 bucks, you're saving, you're saving around 100 bucks from the XL 2546K, which is a good fair bit that you can invest in the other things like your mouse. So instead of having like a $50 budget for a glorious mouse, you can actually go up and get a super light. I don't know, go crazy. And there's also the fact that if you are a content creator like me, and you also want to try competitive gaming, but you don't want to um, buy two monitors, one IPS for editing and the other TN for gaming, you can always get the FI25F, which has been proven through my testing to be super great for gaming and content creator content creation because it is 100% sRGB calibrated is also a really nice looking 8-bit panel it's super speed IPS so it has great viewing angles and has great color rendition so definitely great for content creation and is also great for gaming so yeah FI25F if you're looking to do both content creation and gaming and of course if you are looking into getting a higher resolution monitor if 1080p isn't enough for you there's always the FI27X which is a 1440p 240Hz panel um, if that's something that you want to spend your money on. And if 240Hz seems to be a little bit out of your budget, there's also the newly introduced G24F, which is a great 144Hz option. So yeah, those are pretty much your options. I just wanted to highlight a few, just in case you still had a little bit of doubt on your mind. So yeah, with that being said, I hope you guys found this video useful. Hopefully this puts a lot of insight into which monitor you should get in context of your needs and your budget. And with that being said, thank you guys so, so much for watching, and I'll see all you beautiful people in the next one.